Hi and welcome, my name is Julianne Cost, and on today's episode of The Complete Picture, we're going to talk about how to add a little bit of a color tone to a black and white image. Now, we're going to start in Lightroom in the Develop module, and I'm here in the Split Toning panel, which is a great way to add a color tone that has a little bit more control than maybe just using like the temperature or tint slider. So here we can see that the image is broken into your highlights area and your shadow area, and you've got a hue and saturation slider for each one of these two different areas. Now you can select a hue by simply moving the hue slider, but we don't see anything actually happening in the image. If you hold down the Option key, now we get a preview of the color, the hue that you're picking, at 100% opacity so that you can pick the right color. Then when you let go of the Option or the Alt key, you can then dial in the amount of saturation that you want for that tone. You can also use the color picker right here. You can click and then just click anywhere inside this color area in order to select a tone. You can also enter in numeric values or use the scrubby sliders here to move left or right, and you can dial in the amount of saturation. When you're finished, just click on the X to close that. So that's a great way to add a tone. In this case, we added it to the shadows. So if you're thinking of adding something like a sepia tone to your image, if you want to mimic the traditional toning, you would definitely add that color to the shadows. If, on the other hand, you were trying to create, say, an antique looking image, then we wouldn't add the color to the shadows, but instead we would add it to the highlights. So let me quickly reset my shadows. I'll just double click on the word shadows and everything's reset to zero. Hold down the Option or the Alt key in order to pick the yellow color that I want in my highlights, and then dial in that amount of color using the saturation slider. You can see now that this image looks a little bit more antique because I'm adding the color in the highlights, and what makes an antique photo, of course, is the yellowing of the paper over time, and it would yellow in the highlight area. That's where we would see that toning. There's also a balance slider here though, and that's not used very often, but it's really, really important. Let me show you why. I'm going to reset my highlights by double clicking on it, and then let's add back in a little bit of sepia tone into the shadows. You can see as I increase the amount of saturation, I'm really getting a lot of color sort of up into the midtones. I use the balance slider in order to suppress that by moving the balance slider to the right. Now you can see that I still have quite a bit of red. It's quite saturated, but it's not affecting the midtones. Of course, if you find a certain combination of sliders and balance that you like, then you would want to make a preset. And we'll do that over on the left-hand side by clicking the plus icon and then naming our preset. So this could be called sepia in shadow, so it's a sepia tone there, and I would want to make sure that the only thing that I'm checking is the split toning, because I personally would have taken the image to black and white already, probably using a preset as a starting point, and then refining the sliders probably in hue, saturation, and luminosity in order to get the custom black and white conversion. So all I want here is to have a preset that affects the split toning. If I want to make sure that this is going to look the same in future versions of Lightroom, I would also check on the process version here. And then of course I can choose which folder to save this in. For now we'll use the user presets, and I'll click on Create. So now I could make any number of changes to any of these sliders here, highlights and shadows, but if I wanted to return back to the sepia look that I like, all I need to do is click that preset in the preset panel. And of course, if I find another image and I want to apply the same settings, I would just select the image and click on the preset. The balance also plays an important role when you're trying to add color to both the shadows and the highlights. So for example, if I wanted to add just a slight warming, what I might want to do is I might want to add a little bit different of a hue to the shadow and highlight. So in this case, let's go ahead and add maybe a hue of say 25 here in my shadows, right? So that's going to be a redder color. And then I'm going to add a hue of maybe 45 in my highlights. That's going to be a little bit more yellow. 
And typically, I will add a little bit more saturation in my highlights. So let's say we go up to maybe even 40 in my saturation, and I'll come down to, say, about 20 in my saturation of the shadows. But it starts to look a little bit muddy, and that's because the balance is off here. So now you can use the balance slider in order to determine where the highlights and shadows cross over one another. Now, obviously, this is far too much, but I wanted to make sure that you could see the changes that I was making um, when the video is compressed. Obviously, if I tap the Y key, we can see the before and after, and to me, this just looks really, really overtoned. So let's take a look at a few of the single color presets that I've created, and you're more than welcome to download these. So here I have kind of an antique look. Again, it's really subtle. You can see I've only got the whites in the top 10% here, so my balance is set all the way down to negative 90, and it's just a slight saturation of a yellow color here. If we go to this blue preset, now we can see, again, this is only a single tone, meaning that I've only added color to the shadows, but again, the balance is set way up to the right, up near 85, so that I've only got that blue really in those shadow areas and not in the midtone. This is kind of a more mustard look. It's a little bit warm. This actually works well um, if you're just trying to warm up an image. Here I have a sepia. This kind of used to be my favorite sepia tone here, but I'm gonna go with this one now. Again, it's very subtle if you look at the difference between the before and the after, but you can notice that red sepia in the shadows. Okay, there's also just some general presets here for blue versus cyan if you simply want to move through these and see each one of the different color ranges, magenta, orange, purple, and red, and see what those colors would look like just as a starting point. Now, if we look at the split toning, meaning that there's both color added in the shadows and the highlights, then we will move to this next set. We can see this is more of kind of a chocolate stain. I called this the coffee stain here. It's got a lot more kind of yellow in the highlight area. I have a very bold cyan yellow split. We've got, it's called forest horror. It's, a, it's kind of a green cast that you might see um, if you're looking for that kind of mood. And we've got an orange yellow split, again, uh, quite strong a red cyan split, very strong. And then we've got these three that add warmth. So we've got the really strong warmth, we've got a medium warmth, and then a really, really subtle effect just to kind of warm up an image. And of course, some of these can also be used with color images. You don't necessarily have to take your image to black and white. And then finally, I've also got some presets, but these don't use the split toning panel. So obviously there's more than one way to add a color tone to your image. In fact, let's reset this using the snapshot to black and white and scoot up here. Instead of using split toning, we'll use the tone curve. And let's reset this to a linear curve right now. This is the RGB, so this is the composite channel. But if I go into any of the individual channels, red, green, or blue, then I can add a color tone. Before I go there, um, in case this is what your tone curve looks like, you might wanna scroll down to the bottom of the tone curve panel and click here to display the point curve. That's what I'm using, and that's where you have access to red, green, and blue. So for example, if I went to the blue curve, clicking anywhere and lifting up is going to increase the amount of blue. Clicking and dragging down does the opposite, so the opposite of blue is yellow, so it's going to give me a yellow tone. So of course I can add any number of points here, which actually gives me a lot more control than, say, the split tone panel. If I drag these points off, don't forget you can also move the end point. So if I simply move the curve up a little bit at the end, you can see now that I have a nice blue tone in those shadows. If I want it only to affect the shadows and not the midtones, I could add another point here and bring the curve down so that now only this area here is being affected and only that area is having the blue tone added to it. I might want to add one more here. I can see a little bit of yellow. See how a little bit of yellow is being introduced? I'll just make sure that that part of the curve stays straight so that those highlights are not affected by my curve. And of course, you can go in and use a combination of any of these. So I could use 
um, the green with the blue to make it either green or magenta. I could go in here with red, and again, we could isolate just a certain area if I just wanted to add cyan in the highlights or if I wanted to add a little bit of red. All right, in order to reset that, I'll double click on where it says point curve, and then we'll come back over here to the presets, and there's just three here. I've got a stark winter blue preset, a warmer chocolate preset, and then a weathered marble. And these presets, I'll just show you here. When I click the plus icon in order to save my preset, I was not saving the split toning, but instead I was saving the tone curve options. Excellent, so as you can see, adding a subtle tone to any of your images, black and white, or they could even be color, is really, really very easy in Lightroom. Simply use either the split toning panel or come into the tone curve and use the individual channels to alter the color. My name is Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching. <music>